We're on air. Okay. Well, good evening, <laughs> Needlebug family. How is everyone this evening? I see that there are quite a few of you here and to join us with our guest tonight, who is Ronnie Rowe of Ronnie Rowe Designs. So let's give him a wonderful needle bug welcome. We're so glad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are so glad to have him here with us today. And I saw this as an opportunity to um, get the word out about Ronnie and his designs. <laughs> and. Um, have all of you become familiar and let him tell us a little bit about what he does and how he does it and why he does it. So he will also take questions. Absolutely. So those of you hopefully came prepared with a few questions and that will be just absolutely wonderful that he will, will um, answer your questions. Oh, Missy's here. Hello, Missy and Donna and Heather and Teresa. Wonderful. I'm so glad you're joining. So let me start out with a question to get this going and ask, Ronnie, how did you get started doing cross-stitch? Because when you started... Golly geez, that was not a time where men were into needle arts. It wasn't a big popular thing with men. And how did you get started? I think the I think the only man in it at the time was probably a football player, Rosie Greer. Yes. And uh, but anyway, before I answer that, I want to thank you, Karen, and thank everyone for allowing me to come into your home and answering the questions. I really appreciate it a whole lot and uh, everything that Karen has done and setting this up and uh, and you especially for uh, joining in with us today and uh, hope I hope you find it entertaining. Hope you uh, get a laugh here and there for the next hour or so. so <laughs> but uh, anyway, how did I get started with cross stitch? Well, I'm a I've got the long version and the short version. The, long, the short version is my wife was cross. I've been doing it for approximately 43 years I've been designing. So I've been around a long time. And uh, my wife was cross-stitching and uh, asked me one night if I'd like to try it. I said, no, nah, I don't want to do that. And uh, so she kept persisting. And uh, I said, yeah, give me something. She, she gave me a pattern with a little owl. Oh, yeah. Ow. That is the first cross stitch that Ronnie Rowe ever did in my life was this little owl. And it very simple, a little back stitching in it and everything. So I did it. And uh, but I wanted to do something big after that. I figured, well, if you can make one stitch, you can make a hundred or a thousand. So Went and purchased some uh, leaflets at the local uh, craft store, needle workshop. Well, I don't even think we had needle workshops in my area at the time. It was a craft, craft short store. Mm -hmm. And I bought a couple books by a lady by the name of Judith Sandy. And she put out some works called Timeless Designs. And so I did those, liked it, framed them all up, and I decided to go to Colonial Williamsburg. And that's where I'm live basically i'm about 15 miles from williamsburg went up my with my camera no no digital cameras back then folks you had to go buy the film the roll of film and get it developed <laughs> went, up, went up and took some pictures of the governor's palace and of some of the taverns bruton parish church and um came back and uh I had it developed and sat down with my repetograph pen. That's an old type of ink pen that we used to use. Now, and remember, no computers, no computers, anything. And um, got me some uh, graph paper and started making little X's and A's for colors and just kind of figured out what I wanted to do. And so stitched them up and it turned out okay. 
they were okay. And um, so I made some patterns and carried them up to Williamsburg and they bought them. I couldn't believe it. I told my wife when I came back that Saturday, there are places up there bought these things from me <laughs> and said they, they bought them. And um, so the light bulb went up. So I, that's that's in a nutshell how I got started. And I, started, I, I did that for uh, a number of years. Well, three or four or five, three years or so. And uh, I was lucky enough to run into a, uh, uh, they had a little wine and cheese thing at the soap and candle factory up in Williamsburg. And I was invited to come up and show some of my work. And Hoffman Distributing Company happened to be there that weekend. Mm -hmm. So Phyllis Hoffman, Lane and Wayne Huff, they, they came by, liked my work and picked my work up and said they would distribute it. So that's where I am. And 40, moving ahead, 43 years. Here I am. I'm still doing it. Still putting out designs. Mm -hmm. So that's, that is... that's basically how I got started. There was no, there was no planning in this at all. Absolutely <laughs> no planning. Um, it was just uh, on the cuff. Just see see what happened. And so, and I, I and I found it interesting. I really did. I found it interesting to be able to come up with something, and uh, put it on paper, draw it all out, and figure out what you want and um, stitch it and, and have it framed. And I thought it was, it was, it was, it was like a painting, if you will. You only took a lot more time cross stitching. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really how I've been into it. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing it ever since then. And and right now I'm doing it a whole lot right now, coming out with new patterns, new designs. And that's where I am. Mm -hmm. And you do stitch all of your designs prior to releasing them right every one of my designs that i do i'm probably different than a lot of designers out there uh, when i come up with a design i uh i put it all now i put it all on the computer what i do i've got programs that i use affinity designer affinity photo a lot of drawing processes i go through for the design but when i look at a design on color it's got 30 shade 30 different colors in it what i'm seeing on the screen when i'm looking at it isn't necessarily what you get when you stitch i might not like that shade of red or that shade of blue or the way it looks so when i'm stitching my work working along i'll look at what i have designed and say no i'm changing that that's not right i'm going to move some stuff around so I'm constantly changing the design as I stitch. Now, that's for works that I do with just colors, using, say, 30 colors in the design. But the uh, black and white, that's easier to do because that's just one color, black on white. So I can, uh, I, I, but I do stitch every single one of these. And to show you one, I'm finishing up right now. I showed Karen this early. Oh, I yeah. When I did the... Uh, the red bench and this is it i just took this out of the hoop and this is where i am and look at the back it's terrible but anyway <laughs> my stitching this is the red bench and i got this much more to go on this design right now so what i have done is i stitch every bit of it before this is sent out so to make sure it's right something that i i don't want to do so yeah stitch every one of them well, and I, and I think that's very admirable of you to do because personally, I feel like then you know and we know what we're getting is accurate. We're not going to have trouble down the line and going, oh, wow, this color really looks terrible here. It's not right. That's that's correct. And it's it's now a lot of people have come back and said, well, why did you use that shade of blue or why did you do, you know, well, it's because what I liked. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you can change it. I And you talk about the patterns being right. I, I Some time ago, I had a uh, I did a series of Williamsburg designs and I had a. Uh, uh, the courthouse up there, and I had another Carter's Grove. And all of them, all of these leaflets were the same size. So mm -hmm. 
also type the same size. And I sent three of them to the printer. And when I got them back, I sent them out to Hoffman. I sent them out to the distributors and shops. And I started getting letters from people saying the design wasn't right. Mm. It, it, they, they, the symbol, the, it, the symbol didn't show up right. And, and I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. And I couldn't figure out what happened. And what happened was the printer had taken, pay, it should be page one and two of this design. They had taken page one of this design and put the other design page two on it and printed all this stuff. And when you look at it, you couldn't tell it unless you had stitched it. Oh, this the design. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And uh, I'm calling up Hoffman Distributing. Stop everything. And I had to go back. And so that was a printing mistake. by the, And it was a printer. It really was. <laughs> so that, that caused some headaches. I'm sure it did. Yeah. I'm sure it did. But I still think it's absolutely wonderful that your designs are, have already been stitched so that when people see that cover, right, that's what they're getting. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. Stitch everyone. That's why I put out, I'm putting out probably four designs a year because mm -hmm. this one right here, I started this design in, um, early january yeah and so and here we are in april so it takes me about three takes me about three months three and a half months to do the design to stitch it frame it have everything completed and then mm -hmm. do all the follow-up work as far as producing the leaflets to send out and everything mm -hmm. so it's about a three and a half three three and a half month process i go through in doing this and so that's uh so it's uh, i don't I don't put out a lot, a lot of stuff. A lot of people have asked me to put out a lot of smaller pieces. So, you know, the little things that somebody can stitch um, in a day or two. Well, I, I've i never been interested. I've just never been interested in that. Mm -hmm. Something uh, I, I like a, a larger design. I'm going to turn this light down here. Um, but I do like... Uh, I like the larger designs to do something and show a lot of detail, the depth, perspective of something and something mm -hmm. not just flat, flat on. And so, but you do limit the number of colors that you use. Yes, I do. When I pick mm -hmm. a, when I, when I do a design and what I'm doing now, this one you see right here, um, <coughs> I will pick a size, I'll pick a size that I want the design to be before, after I've made after I figured out what I want to do in it, I pick a size like a 320 by two, uh, two, 210. And the reason I do that is so each sheet of that design comes out like if it's three, if it's 300, 320, I know eight, so I can have eight 10 by 10 squares across on that one sheet of paper in sheet one, two, and three. And I limit myself the number of colors in the design. I always pick around 30 colors for a color design because I know some people put out designs and they've got, gosh, I don't know how many colors and that's, it's too much. And so mm -hmm. you gotta, one thing I've always tried to do is keep the, keep it down. So keep the cost down for the consumer to go out and buy the DMC or the material and everything to do a design. And I've always used DMC. I've always used DMC. I've never, when I go to Nashville and to the market uh, trade shows, you see a lot of specialty threads, beautiful threads. And they are, they are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I have found out with my work and everything, it's easier to use DMC because it's available everywhere. You can get it. People don't have to order it online. For the most part so it's a it's fairly easy to get all the colors so that's that's the way i have always approached it now i've been doing that way for a long time and i guess you could say i'm too old to change i'm probably not going to change that's <laughs> that's that's, that's what yeah I but it's doing. it is really nice that you have the consumer is a priority for you oh where yeah you're, absolutely. where you're saying you know what i need to keep this affordable i have seen i have 
I have seen patterns, and I know you you have too, as well as the folks listening in. Uh, I've seen patterns that you could go out and you could spend hundreds of dollars putting it. You could spend a lot of money with the be with everything on the mm-hmm. design, and they're gorgeous. They they're wonderful, but they're they're not they're not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Everyone doesn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying to keep the cost down as much as as much as possible. And if you use 30, 30 colors, the people that buy my designs, they've got some of the colors already, you know, in their stash, <laughs> in their basket, in the drawer, out in the shed. I, I've got I I rarely go out because years ago when I first got started, DMC would send me all the all the floss i wanted they'd send me boxes and boxes of this stuff oh wow and um, i still have that i've got thousands of skeins of floss and i've got it all cat it's all over the place <laughs> and so if you can look in my office here it's it's, it's it's a mess but um and um but i've always worked also i've always worked on 18 count i've never worked on anything but 18 count um, I, I, I went, I did do a project here last year on black material and I swore I'd never do that again. And I was thinking about, I was thinking about doing another one, but I've come up, yes, with you were. One, but I'm coming up with a better idea or so anyway. <laughs> yeah. Black is not my favorite thing to stitch on. I'll tell you that straight up. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, now. You've always worked on 18 count. Right. And that's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Part of me would like to do one on a higher count fabric over one. I have seen my, I have seen them done. I have seen my, uh, some of my work at Woodlawn Plantation in years past done on 22 and up and some of it. And uh, it's gorgeous. Turned out, turned out great. I guess the reason I really do it on 18 count is keeping in mind, I love to stitch them. I love my design to do them. But then I'm doing the, the design, the stitching, to have a picture made to put on the cover of yeah. leaflets to send out. Yeah. And so um, I'm just not going to put my eyes through all that strain. <laughs> I'm just not. <laughs> what I'm used to, really. Well, then you have to buy a pair of scientific glasses like I have. (laughs) Oh, my. So out of all of them that you have, all the patterns that you have done and all the things that you have stitched, do you have a favorite? I, I guess. Yes. And, and people have everything. If you went on my website and looked at everything I've done, or gone on SD Ronnie Road Designs and look at everything I've done, you probably would not pick out the one that I really enjoyed. And I have it right here. I'm gonna show it to you. Good. <laughs> and this is an old. I took this picture years ago when my wife and I were up in New England. It's an old lobster house, and I put a rope in front of it. And that picture right there, and I apologize for the glass. It's got glass. I know it's some glass. But that pic, this picture right here, I liked it because the area down here. Ju- I worked a long, long time figuring out how much shading, how much you had to see through so that you could look under this building for the pylons going back. Tilt it front a little bit, Ronnie. That'd get rid of the glass. There you go. And uh, that was really important, right in this area underneath right here. And that was, um, and you had to have it. I hope that's showing up a little bit better. Yeah, it's And good. you had to do it subtly enough with those browns to look through that to make it look like the pollens underneath and just a, and just a stick sticking there. Uh-huh. That was that was that was a struggle on that, but I really like this picture. I, that's one of my favorite, and I've got. I, I guess I guess it really answered the question. The one I'm working on right now. <laughs> I do. I, I 
at Williamsburg. I like when I was doing the Williamsburg series. I enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. Then I got into musical instruments. I started doing some musical instruments, and uh, it all depends on what what just hits hits me at the time that I'd want to do. And and of course, since I've been doing the grandkids, I've done my grandchildren. I've done oh, I I do a lot of custom work for people that want mm-hmm. want it done if they want their cats, their dog, their grandchildren, their homes and everything. I do that. Now, I don't stitch those. I don't stitch them, but I do all the design work for them and let them stitch them. I, I, I couldn't possibly do that. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's, uh, yeah, I like that one. This old lobster hell. I really enjoyed doing, doing that. Yeah. So. Well, I was looking through yours and the one, the one that I really liked and I know my husband would really like is the one where you have the building with the antique cars in front of oh, it. Oh, yeah. That they're the faded. One. Yeah. And uh, what I did with that, uh, Back in Time, it was called Back in Time. And uh, yes. bear with me one second. I'm right here. I'm, I'm in my office and I pulled, I've got this stuff arranged. That is Back in Time. Yes. That's the one you're talking about. And this yep. is in, let me get one that's not in plastic here so you won't get a glare. But anyway, that particular design right here, I, I like the houses and everything, but what I wanted to do is put the old cars mm-hmm. in front of, but I wanted to fade those into the house mm-hmm. so that you could sit there and see this vehicle right here, but you could see the house in also behind it, like it was fading away. Yeah. So, and that's, and that, that turned out, yeah, that's, that's a big design. This this design, matter of fact, is uh, uh, 354 by 246. This is a big design. Ah, that's small. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, when you stitch heaven and earth designs, that's small. <laughs> yeah, but this one, this one really, it turned out nice with the fading, and I plan on doing some more of that. I enjoyed that. Now that fading is are that is that all full crosses or do you use half cross stitch no, to get half that? Cross. This is all full co- crosses. All None full of mine. Uh, I quit doing half crosses and back stitching all that year after the Williamsburg series. I don't ever do that anymore. Every one of my designs is just full crosses. Amazing. No, no halves or anything. So, and in order to do that. You had to take in this area right in here where you see the roof of the car coming. It's hard to see, I know. Um, but anyway, it's faded in. You can see the buildings behind the old, 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 the old um, truck and the old car. Amazing. So, Amazing that, that you do that all full cross stitch. Yeah, it's all full cross stitch. There's no, no half stitching in that, no quarter or anything to, do, to get that effect. So that's yeah. just using a lot of lighter colors, uh, a lot of the yellows, your pale browns and everything for the car to make it look that way. Yeah. So you had to, and the way I, the way I work and everything, is, and I told you earlier during our conversations, I work in layers. What I do is I, I'll take a design after I figure out the size I want. Then I will take and figure out how many colors I want. Each color is assigned a layer. Like if I'm using a black 310, that is layer number one. Then Mm -hmm. I'm layer number two for all my rest of my colors. And I will work on a 10 by 10, one little block, 10 by 10 on my design. Mm -hmm. And I work on that, whether it be a tree or whatever's in that. And I'll put the colors in it and I'll merge those, racetize those and merge them all together in programs. And then work on the next one and I build everything out like that. Amazing. A lot of people, a lot of people have asked me, like on this particular one here, it's probably not a good example, but a lot of them say, well, how do you, if you get to something, you can't figure out the corner of a building, the angles and everything doing this, what do you do? I said, well, I put a tree or a bush in front of it. You know, <laughs> if you're, I mean, down here, when you're, I mean, everybody knows this. When you're stitching right in here, it's really uh-huh. important to get the stitches right so that you get that effect I'm looking for. The tree up here, 
if you off some a little bit on the tree, it doesn't really matter. Right, you right. Know, you, you know, don't go pull everything out for a tree. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. But, uh, you have to get the the essential parts of the design have to be right on. Yeah. All the, I call it filler, all the filler around and everything. Like on the, uh, like on this one I'm working on right now, the red door. And uh -huh. what I tried to do with that is make this, this has only got five colors in it. Wow. That's the only thing. This thing has got only got five, six, six colors, six colors in this thing. And uh, all this blue, I wanted to make it look like a scene that was cold outside. And I wanted to give it some perspective with the, the pathway coming up. But all of this area in here, back in here, that was intentionally done. Those trees faded to make it look like it's faded back somewhere. Uh -huh. That one just, that didn't just, all this like this, this right here, if you look at this side, right here, coming down right here, there's a tree right there. Uh-huh, I see it. But it's a very subtle, yeah, faded type thing, and that's that's the effect I want to get on this. Yeah, so amazing. I put a lot, I put, I put some time into the design aspect of it. What I think I want. And, yes, uh, you do. I mean, that's it's just what I do. I get a kick out of. So I get a kick out of seeing if you can do it. I'll be sitting here at the computer some nights, and I've got. I swear, I've got hard rock music blaring. <laughs> I've got, I've got, I, I really do. I mean, I've got it blaring on my speakers and I'm working on one 10 by 10 square. I'll sit there for hours working on something. <laughs> and, 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 and you'll look at it and you'll say, and I'll look at it and say, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. But um, it's not right. And you got it. You, you have to sit down and just, and when you know it's right, you, you got it when it's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, you do. You know. That's what I do. Joy is asking if your patterns are available as a PDF. And if they are, do they go into Pattern Keeper or Markup? Uh, I have some patterns on SD that are PDF. But most of my patterns are not PDF files. So they're, they're hard copy and... Uh, now, the reason I do that, the reason I do that is because I sell to distributors, mm -hmm. Hoffman Distributing, uh, Witchell Imports, and those those folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're selling hard copies to shops. And right. most of the time, if you go into a shop and buy a pattern, it, you know, a, a leaflet, a pattern, it's, it's not a PDF. And... Um, they ju they just don't sell those, and so um, I'm selling to distribute. So no none of my none of my stuff is is a, is compatible with Pattern Keeper because of the way I design it. Now they have programs out there that you can do a cross stitch design and push a button. You got the design. You push another button. It's a PDF and it goes into Pattern Keeper. Mm -hmm. Not the way I develop them and not the way I have to put everything in leaflets at the end. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. I've always been an advocate of these shops too. I always think that you ought to, you know, we want to keep as many shops as we possibly can. That's the way I've always looked at it. When I go to, when I go to Nashville market and uh, I, that's one of the biggest complaints I hear from, the hundreds of shops that come come by to see your work is uh, uh, they're they're just canned canned stuff putting into that into a into a PDF into Pattern Keeper. It's nothing wrong. Pattern Keeper is wonderful. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. tool to use. No question about that. But um, my mine are mine are just the old school where you have to buy the pattern and sit down <laughs> and get you a marker or. A, yeah. Or, or whatever and follow the pattern. Back in the day where we used a that's lot what, of different colored markers. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, I do that too. I've got a magnetic board with a, you know, a magnet on it that I sit down in and go row by row and I 
I do it the way I stitch. I do the same thing. So, but mm -hmm. anyway, that's uh, no, it, they're not. Mine do not go into Pattern Keeper, but I do have PDF files on SD. There are some PDF files, some of my uh, black and whites, my Williamsburg uh, pen and inks. Uh, mm -hmm. Go on there and take a look. Mm -hmm. Well, now people, I think they do realize that if they have a paper pattern, they can scan it and put it into Pattern Keeper. I have heard that works well. Yes. I have heard, I talked to um, Stitching with Jewels, and uh, that does work. You can take one of my patterns and put it on a scanner and scan it. I guess you'd have to do it, I don't know, 300 DPI, and scan it in and save it as a PDF file. Yeah. And that probably would go into Pattern Keeper, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I and I think tried, it also goes into it. markup. I haven't tried it. I don't even have Pattern Keeper, so I, I don't. I don't know, but I heard it. That would work. Mm -hmm. So there is a, there is an option for people who buy the the hard copy and then want to put it in either Pattern Keeper or Marco. Right. They can right. do that. All my patterns, um, what I've been doing for a long time now, I've got a note on all my patterns that uh, it's, I give permission for them to enlarge the pattern, to copy the pattern, do anything they want to the pattern to help them with their stitching. Mm -hmm. Obviously, obviously, that doesn't mean you can go and produce a lot of patterns and go out and sell them just because you made a copy of them. People <laughs> do that. But anyway, that's okay. That's another, yeah. that's another story. That's a whole other discussion. That's yeah. a whole other discussion. <laughs> now, Stacy is asking, what's your inspiration for some of your work? For some of your designs, one of the Stacy, one of the hardest. That's one of the hardest things that I have to do is come up with something. I mean, I to come up with an idea or something that I think people would like to stitch. That I, first of all, that I'm interested in, that I'd like to stitch. I'm not going to spend three months doing a design and stitching it if I don't like it. I mean, that's. <laughs> That's a given. And so, uh, but it is hard. It's hard to come up with an idea or something that hasn't really been done. I made, I make a point when I go to market, go to Nashville, the trade shows, I make a point to walk around every other designer's booth room and take a look and see what's out there. And then I try to come up with something. Well, what's, What's not out there? What 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 am I? You know, what's a good idea? And it it's always been a struggle. It really has for me, coming <laughs> up with something. But but uh, I always seem to come up with something. Yeah, you and, do. Uh, I come up with something. I've got I've got something right now. I'll share it with you that uh, I was going to do a black on black material on my YouTube channel. If you've ever watched Ronnie Rowe on YouTube. My last one, I'm telling people my next project after this red bench is going to be on black material. I got this great idea. Well, since I made that video, that's gone to the wayside. I've come up with another idea. And uh, that idea is, and I I just want to do it. I mean, I, I don't know how successful it will be. I'm going to have... If you picture a design, I'm going to have a blue, I'm going to have a blue bench over here, a blue bench. And, and it's a reason for the trash can I'm putting in. And the whole skylight of here of New York, it's a civil of the sky of New York, of the buildings. And I've got a homeless person sitting here with a sign that says help. And what I'm going to do and, uh, is, is the grass, not grass, is dirty sitting on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work that up. And everything I get from that, every sale I get, is going to go to uh, the rescue mission here and where I live uh, in the area. I'm going to, every, every, every penny, if it, if it sells just one, it's going to them. And so I, I, thought I, I thought I'd do that. I just, I just, I just thought that'd be a good idea to do. And so... Mm -hmm. That's going to be my next project. I haven't, <laughs> haven't started stitching it. Haven't even started finished design. We got a little bit of design done on it, but not much. But that's my idea. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's how I come up with an idea. 
So when you have that idea, mm -hmm. how do you start designing that? I'll start, first of all, with a pencil sketch. I will sketch out what I want. I'll sketch real roughly what I want. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take that, that sketch just on a piece of white, 8 by 10, 8 and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I'll put that on my scanner, and I will scan that in, and it's a pencil drawing. Mm -hmm. And I will take that, and I will put that in Affinity Designer. And once I got into Affinity Designer, it's got so many tools. These are so powerful programs that I'll take paint brushes and various other techniques and I'll paint what I think I want on that. Once I get it into that, I'll import that whether into Canvas, into graphics or GIF converter, for the effects I want. But normally I'll put it in Affinity Photo. And Affinity Photo will let me use different brush strokes and things till I get the picture the way I want. Once I get the picture like I want, and that I don't care about size at this point, I will take and shrink that down, and I will capture that and put that the number of pixels I want, the 220 or 3F across the top. And then I will take that and put that into graphics. And graphics is a program that I have gone through and made a whole bunch of different sizes of grids that could fit a that particular size with pixels that I want. I have manipulated these programs to do this cross stitch. Oh. I've spent a lot of time just trying to figure out how do I take this and put it in to that graph. And so, and I've got it in it's a program called graphics. I'm using a Mac and um, it'll put it in that. And then once I got it in there, I can go to various layers also in graphics to pull out what I want. And I go from there. And my final product is I put in Keynote. Now, Keynote is mm. Keynote is just like uh, PowerPoint, if you will. Only mm. Keynote is for Macintosh. And uh, that's what I do on my publication. It put everything in the final product before I print it, send it to the printer. Final thing. So it's a process. It's a process that I go through, but the the I guess the the biggest part of the process was with graphics. The way I put stuff together, the program graphics, that was that was really a, that 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 was really a, a stretch getting that for me trying to figure that out <laughs> how I wanted to do it because size trying to get the size, <coughs> trying to get the pick trying to get all that to put into it that was that you had to figure all that out. A lot of work. Can't be. It ain't hard to do. If I could do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> Not hard. That's so, what I say. If I can do this, anybody can do I, this. I can do it. Somebody else can do it. People have asked me, I said, well, gee, you know, can could I do something like that? Well, yeah. And uh, I've had people come up and say, you know, <clears throat> I've got this design. This was years ago. Now we got the internet. You've got PDF files, you got SD, you got all these things. But back in the day, people would say, well, you know, I got this really nice design and uh, I want to print it and I, I like to get it out there. I mean, what do I do? I said, well, the number one thing you got to do is you got to have a distributor because mm -hmm. you can go and print a bunch of these things and got one shop going buy six of them. I mean, if, you, if you're looking at that aspect of cross stitch, if you're looking at the marketing, that mm -hmm. end of it. I've um I, I I've always told younger people in Nashville and play. I said they said, well, you know how many if you sell one if you sell one design, your success you did wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's you know, if somebody bought. I told you I'll tell the I'll tell the uh, other folks uh, here also. I got a letter years ago from a gentleman, from a gentleman in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania that he had stitched now let's go ahead the letter he had stitched one of my designs and wrote me this long letter told me how much that helped him getting through his chemotherapy man that that was that was the best thing i've ever in my in 43 years that's mm -hmm. that was that was good that was really cool you know, well, that makes it all worthwhile to oh, know that worthwhile. what you've done is. That is all worthwhile. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.
Absolutely. Stacy has on here, and you answered this already. Do you stitch your own pieces? Stacy, oh, yes. Yeah. Ronnie does stitch his own pieces. Every one Every of them. blessed one of them. <laughs> sure do. Sure do. Ask him where he has them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where are my pieces? I've got I've got some pieces in Alexander, Virginia, hanging in shops up there. I've got pieces hanging in um, Williamsburg, Virginia. There's a new uh, shop in Williamsburg. Uh, it's called, uh, oh gosh, there I go. Heritage something? No, it's, um, no. I don't know what's wrong with me, but anyway, that's beside the point. I'll, it'll come to me in a minute. But they have a lot of them hanging, the Williamsburg hanging up there. And the rest of them are in my house in boxes. I've got them in boxes sitting here stored, and that's where they are. <laughs> Hanging, I pulled some off the wall. Here's one I just pulled off. This one I like, too. You asked me what I like. This was one I did. and this. Oh, was, that's uh, the boat. Huh? That's yeah, the boat. This, yeah, I kind of like that because of the snowy scenes and everything. That was, that was kind of, you know. So uh, all of these, what you see, I'm I'm showing you. They, they're either hanging on the wall in a box somewhere in this office, or, you know, we they're they're done. We'll move on to something else. It's kind of like, and I know everyone's been to art shows. Everybody's been to art shows, outdoor art shows. They got the canvas tents and everything, and people want to. Ah, oh, man, those things are cool. What do those people do with all that stuff? I can tell you what they do with it. It's behind the sofa. <laughs> it's in the garage. It's in the attic. I can tell you exactly where all that stuff goes. I mean, it's you know, that's they got bought. They got all these you know limited edition prints, and they got all this stuff. All that stuff is the same as Ronnie Rowe. It's all in boxes or somewhere. Because I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> well, Stacy's also asking. What is the longest one to stitch? Like what one, I'm, I'm thinking she means what one took you the longest to stitch? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. Um, well, if you ask, I'm going to show you another picture. This one took Yay. probably as long as anything. I got pictures. I pulled some out. I got, you can't see them on camera, but I got this one right here was a fall picture I did, Wagon Fall Holdage. This is a big design, I thought. That took a while. Oh, wow. Of the wagon and, you know, the little stream and the rocks and the building. I hope you can see that, all right? Yep, yep. But that that's a, that's a fairly large, that's a large piece, all framed. And I do a lot, in framing, I do all my own framing. These all, I put a lot of them in these metal frames and so i just think they look good like that and use a lot of white mat board but that one is um that's a lot of detail and uh so that one took a that fall this this one took a, a while to do is that your biggest one ronnie no no the biggest one was the uh uh native american indians oh really that's probably the largest piece i did and uh, oh. that's that's big, it, but it it didn't take as long to stitch, and the reason why was because a lot it was it was done with just the a little bit of blue sky, but everything else in it. I I, I used to do uh, uh, three ten black on the black and whites, but mm -hmm. what happened then? I got I, I wised up a little bit. You could see some of the behind the material you could see where you went over two or three stitches on it so i started using 844 which is a really dark gray yes and uh so uh the american indian but a lot of that it's a big picture but it's not that long to stitch because a lot of the white in it is the material that you're looking at right if you if you think of the black and whites right so i mean it's it, it but that's a big that's a big piece yeah, but that's never, a really I nice never, piece. I have never done, I have never done a cross stitch design in 43 years 
that I didn't stitch and I didn't finish it. Every single one of them, I finished. And uh, I, I didn't get to, I ain't going to finish this. I'll throw it over in the corner and get to it later. And I know people do that. I oh, know. yeah. They, know they do. It's human nature. But I don't, I don't I'll go. i put my <laughs> hand up. I do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go. Uh, I make sure I finish something. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, but I, but I, I'll have to admit I do look forward to doing the next one when you get like this this bench here this red bench I'm doing you know hey I, I'm enjoying it and everything but I'm looking forward to the next project also yeah well that's always interest that's always Stacey, good though looking ahead yeah but Stacy coming up with an idea coming up with an idea is really really hard and um, yeah. I, I I did the Williamsburg and of course. <laughs> Williamsburg did really well for me because it was Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh And um, everyone's heard of Williamsburg and I'm close to Yorktown, Virginia, right around the corner. And people say, why don't you do something Yorktown? No one's heard of Yorktown. I can't sell a pattern to a little, to a person in Peoria, Illinois from Yorktown, but I can do the Exxon station and put Williamsburg, Virginia. They'll buy it because it's Williamsburg. Yes. Yes. So that's that's uh yes. That it's just that like is. my telling people I live about 25 miles from Hershey Park. Right. Everybody knows Hershey Park. <laughs> sure, they know Hershey Park, but they don't know the town you live in. Nope. They know, I mean it's the same it's the same thing. So anyway, and uh the I, I guess I guess I was very, very lucky when I started because I did the Williamsburg and we had four really good shops. We had with three shops and then we had the Williamsburg Pottery Factory, which was world known. I mean, that people from all over everywhere went to the Williamsburg Pottery Factory. And my designs in there, I had new tourism every week mm-hmm. in summer. So it wasn't it wasn't a shop sitting somewhere where the same people went in every week. And that happens in your, your designs are sitting there. They've already seen them. I had brand new customers every week. Yeah. So that, that really, that really was very fortunate for me. Yes. Yes. Um, in a tourist area started. like that. Absolutely. Oh yeah. You can, yeah. you can, you can uh, capitalize on tourism and you have to, you have to have a design or something. You think that someone everywhere that somebody would like, maybe like to stitch. They're not going to like to stitch all of them. And you right. have some of them that they do well, and some that I, I did one in the back of. The, I've got one in the back of the, uh, uh, in the back, the uh, Colonial Windmill. It's a beautiful windmill I did, in Colonial Williamsburg. It's a Williamsburg design. I can't give them away. Oh. I mean the thing. I it just never. I thought it would look good and everything, but you know, mm-hmm. it's it's you don't know you don't know how they're going to turn out. What people uh-uh. what people like so. No matter what you do, it's a risk. Oh, it's 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 well, not not really, not if you enjoy doing it yourself, right there. And then well, then you finish it and box it up. <laughs> <laughs> but as to whether it's going to sell or not, is always as far as that you you never you never know you never know you never know how that's going to uh-uh. work out. So, well, I have another question here. Any advice on framing finished work? This person has a piece. She wants to frame, but I still want to be able to see the stitches. I hope that makes sense. Frame it, but wanting to see the stitches. Um, well, I know that there are a lot of really good frame shops around in various areas. I do my own framing. I buy the mat board. I cut my own mats. I actually build the wooden frames like um, this one I was showing you right here. The frame on this, I built this frame. This this wood right here with all the routing and everything came from Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere. I just buy them and put it on the table saw and rip it and do all the routing on the back. I, I enjoy doing that. And, and, and I got into framing myself. And the reason I did that was because, I mean, quite honest, I was too cheap to pay somebody to do it. That's, uh, that's the truth. I, mean, I, I and and when mine when I framed them, mine turned out turned out just as well. Mm-hmm. You know, take your time. 
Framing can be expensive. Framing is very mm -hmm. expensive. You go. I took. That, uh, I took a piece called Stitcher's Retreat, which is a heaven and earth design, mm -hmm. to total framing in Fairfax, Virginia. Okay. With a discount, it cost me just shy of a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it's very expensive. And, and you know, my designs are large designs. And if someone the way I look at it, like this one right here, you were talking about the faded cars. Mm -hmm. If if somebody's going to go to all the trouble to and, and I, I'm talking about months of stitching this thing, <coughs> do it. They're, they're, they're probably not going to throw it over in the corner and go, so they're probably going to have it framed up. Whereas if you go down, and I'm not knocking any design now, but if you go down and just buy a little turtle or something that you can stitch in the night, you, you, you're you probably not going to go down and spend a lot of money to have it framed. You're probably <laughs> exactly. Gonna, and and my, my designs, I tell people, you know, my designs, if you, they look a lot better than you framed up nice. Yeah. Don't go, don't go to Walmart and get a dollar fourteen cent frame and put one of these things in and think it's going to look good. Now we buy, we buy frames from Walmart mm -hmm. all the time, and what we do is we see some pictures, you know, the little, you know, cheap little frames in there. We bring them home and set them around, but we don't put our family picture. But we leave the people that's pictures when you bought the frame because they look better than we do anyway. <laughs> So when people come in and say, who's that? I said, well, that's my kids. See, so they look better. So we just leave those. No, I'm just <laughs> now, when you frame and you put glass on, yes. do you put spacers in? Well, the spacer is a mat, is a mat board. Okay. The spacer is a double mat board. So the okay. glass, the glass is not touching, the glass is not touching the, uh, the uh, the piece that you stitch the piece you stitch I put that on a foam board. Okay, I and all your stuff board. is matted. Oh, all of it's matted. I yeah. don't I don't do I don't <laughs> do anything. It's not matted. It has I mat everything. I, I yeah. double mat everything. Yeah, I'm not sure what this person's name is, but she's shows as X O one Z U. But I can tell you, I have framed a piece that I did not use mat board and you can actually buy spacers. Oh yeah. And, and I think they're what, like maybe a quarter inch or an uh, eighth inch. They have to be a quarter inch to go into the rabbit that the, that the picture goes, that if the, yeah. the piece is matted on a foam board. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy that. So you can, you can buy them. I don't know. I, I dealt with a place where I could buy, the frame, the glass, the mounting board, it came, it came then as a kit. I just told them I want this size. Right. And then I also ordered spacers from them so that when I did my own, I had spacers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, like I say, I do my own. And so I, that's, I'm not, it turns out all right for me. Well, I'll tell you what, after I paid all that money to have Stitcher's Retreat framed, now that took me five years to stitch. So I did not feel bad right. about spending that. But after that, I frame all my own too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now I pin frame. I put all well, those little pins in. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, well, that you do it the right way. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, um, I'm, I don't, I don't pin, I don't pin anything. I don't take, I don't go to all that kind of trouble. I just don't. I mean, I like it. I, I'm not even going to tell people what I do. They'll laugh at me. So anyway, you already know. So I already yeah. know. So I'm not going to say a word. I, I tape Your it. secret's I tape safe with tape. me. I pull and tape it around. I, I do. I mean, that's what I do. They don't come apart. They look fine. No one would ever know. That's right. They and that's know. how we were taught to frame back in the day. My wife says, "Oh, they'll come. Uh, they'll come apart a hundred years from now." <laughs> yeah, like I'm going to really care. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, I don't care. But anyway, I, that's 
if they last my lifetime, that's good. <laughs> Let me tell you an interesting story. Years ago, I used to go to uh, I used to go to craft shows with cross stitch. I had the tent, as I, you know, the the white tent you set up, and all really? everybody's out there trying to make a dollar to sell. And I got all the weems, all these pictures I just showed you. They're hanging up, trying to sell them. And uh, I had a big sign up. And I said, ask about having your home done in County Cross Stitch. And what I was doing at the time, I was doing designs. I would go by your home, take pictures. And this was before digital now. And I would take pictures of your home, various angles. Hopefully, when the sun was shining, I could get shadows and everything. And I'd go back home and draw it all up and design it and paint it. And what I would do, and I would stitch them too at the time. And I, I would stitch all this and everything. And what you get is a finished cross stitch, a big cross stitch out of your home by me. And I uh, never what that's worth. But anyway, and I was, I was, and I, I had a number, I was charging, I don't know, four or five hundred dollars or something like that. I had a sign up, ask about having you. And I got this big crowd of people around. And I'm going through the process that I do. And this lady hires up. She hollers to her husband. Now, this guy's standing there. He's got his jeans on with a chain down the side with his keys. <laughs> and he's sitting there and smokes it. You can tell this guy does not want to be at a craft show on a Saturday afternoon. He wants to be fishing, hunting, you know, slaying dragons. The last place on earth he wants to be is at a craft show. But anyway, she hollers over. She says, hey, honey, look, we can have the house done in County Cross Stitch. Well, this guy bellows out in front of me and says, we already got the damn thing done in, in brick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would roll. I thought I would roll. Everybody's falling down laughing. This guy says, she said, we can have our home done in County Cross Stitch. He said, we already got it done in brick. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it is hilarious. Uh, you run into everything but this guy did not want to he did not want to be that show I mean, no no not no. there <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical <laughs> but I don't know how many men are doing this right now, what I do design. And I know that some of them out there, I know there are, there are, there are guys out there doing it now. And yeah. uh, somebody asked me one time, why don't I don't do samplers? I said, because everything that you could even dream of has been done in a sampler. I don't think you can come up with anything else, an alphabet. Amish people, schoolhouse, everything. I, I, I wouldn't even know where to start uh -huh. doing something like that. So, mm -hmm. anyway. Well, you have created your own little niche. I've created, so. yeah, right, with no mm -hmm. planning at all. Uh huh. Just sitting there. I, 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 I have enjoyed every minute of it. I really am. People, oh, people ask me, they say, well, you know, did you, you do this for a living? <laughs> <laughs> do I do it for a living? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You ain't going to get rich quick. Yes. <laughs> yes I, I, I did this for a living. I supported my, uh, the wife, the family, the kids going to college, you know, insurance, home, everything. I, and, and it was all because of cross stitch. Maybe, maybe working at NASA had something to do with that too. Maybe, you know, but yeah, <laughs> no, no, I retired NASA. And so no, it's, it's, <laughs> if I, if I, I told him, I said, if we relied on cross stitch, we would be living in the woods foraging for nuts and berries. You know, way in the world you cross. Yep. It ain't you know, gonna, it ain't it gonna. Ain't gonna happen no nope. hey guess who's here who julie stitching jewels julie <laughs> god i love let me tell you let me tell you how much i love this lady let me tell you about jewels jewel jewels i got the i got the opportunities a few years back to meet jewel she's in colorado i'm in virginia now, how do uh -huh. you 
Yeah, but that's a long story, too. Uh -huh. But anyway, Jules, I got the opportunity to meet her in Nashville. We had a ball. Julie, oh, I bet. We had a ball. She'll tell you we did. Uh-huh. Well, hey, you two. <laughs> she just said, hey, you two. I should say, well, hello, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> I call her my grasshopper. Really? Uh-huh. And she calls me her sensei. Oh, okay. <laughs> because when she was just starting out on her channels, <laughs> I had I helped her put a scroll frame together and put fabric in it and put side tensioners on it and whatever. So well, she's my grasshopper. <laughs> okay, so you helped Julie do all that uh -huh. i didn't help with that but i helped her with some design stuff initially yes, you got did. her into it i, yep. I hope julie i hope julie could, could tell you that i'm somewhat responsible for what she's doing right now oh she says that. that all the time <laughs> jules julie yeah. would you like to be a guest sometime also you can send me an email or message me, you can be my next guest. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because this is rather fun. And right now we have 40 people here. You know, and and, and you asked me the other day, did I did I do any stitching with a group? You know, group stitching? Well, uh -huh. no, no. <laughs> I don't have a group <laughs> to stitch with. But uh I don't know. It's a day. It's a doing the design. It's a different. It's a different perspective on it. I yeah. guess in a, a certain way. A lot. A lot of folks. A lot of people have told me. Say, well, you know, I can cross stitch, but I can't. I can't do. I can't come up with. Uh -huh. You know. I said, well, you know, it take. It takes. A, it takes. It takes some work. It takes some work. Mm -hmm. Well, and first you have to be able to draw a straight line well, without a ruler. <laughs> you got to be able to come up with an idea. You got to be able to know how to manipulate things. And it, it's it's so much easier now with computers than it was before computers. Before computers, God, it it was tough. It, it was it was hard. You really had to you really had to put something into it to do yeah. it. But now you got yeah. computers, so you know. Yeah. Well, and you sketch your designs first. I, I sketch some of what I think I want to do. Yes, I can't do that. You, can, I can't anyone draw. Anyone can. Yeah, you can. You can if you. You know, there are so many. There's so many pictures. There's so much stuff out there that you could take those and work with those and everything. Yeah. There, there's a lots of various ways to go about it. Yeah. And a, a lot of people. Everybody does it in their own different way. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's it's um, it's not as hard. It, it's it's not as hard as you might think. I think the the hard part today for people is they can they can come up with ideas and they can and they're lucky today because you've got the internet, you've got mm -hmm. you got Shopify, you got SD, you got websites, you can. You know, if you if your whole approach is to go through and do a design and market it uh -huh. to make a dollar, let's say if you, if that's your approach now, it's easier now than it used to be because it used to be you couldn't do it without a distributor. You have to have yeah. a distributor. You have to have something good enough that they and the competition was pretty pretty tough, and you had to have something good enough that they they want to invest into you. Yeah. And so, um, and I that was what that was probably the luckiest thing I had happened to me because even today when I come up with a design, I know people now that the designers. I'm sure there's a lot of people designers that uh, distributors don't even distribute for to shops and everything, and, and they they're so inundated mm -hmm. so much. I'm I'm very fortunate being in it as long as I have 40, 43 years doing this. I call up Rod at Hoffman Distributing Company. And I said, Rod, he said, hey, Ronnie, I said, <laughs> I got a new design. 
he said, yeah, send me some, you know, he, he don't even look at them. Uh-huh. They don't even bother mess with him anymore because he knows what I, you know, he knows he can get, he can sell them. Yeah. Well, you're established. I'm established. Well, yeah, I, yeah because I'm, yeah, I'm established because I'm old. <laughs> but they all, but you well, know, join the club. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta be lucky. You get, you gotta, you know, I was lucky getting a distributor in Williamsburg with the Hoffman's car. I was lucky. Mm-hmm. You got it. You can, you can be good. And you can have everything in the world, but you got, you got to have a little luck in it too. Yeah. Kind of, you, you just do. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah. you got, you got to, you got to be, and I don't know if my stuff, I, I like my stuff. I like, I like what I do. So, and if, Somebody will say, well, I don't like that pattern. Why would you use that color? I wouldn't have done it this way. Well, that's okay. That's fine. You know, it's not for everybody. Right. And if maybe you don't like that color, change it to another change color. To another. I had a lady one night call me from Australia. Call me from Australia. I had a design. And on the bottom of Williamsburg, I would put, whether it's a Raleigh Tavern, Williamsburg, Virginia, or Chewing's Tavern, Williamsburg. You know, you wrote it right on the design and everything. We backstitched it on it. And I had it, you know, you used 844 or dark brown or something. She called me from Australia and asked me, can I change that and use a dark brown versus what you said? I, I swear she didn't. I told her, I said, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, really late. But then, I no, I told her, I said, yes, ma'am, that'd be just fine. I said, yes, ma'am, I appreciate you calling. Me. Ditch it in red if you want. <laughs> Huh? I didn't read if you want. <laughs> I, I was I was nice about it, but I'm thinking, gosh, you call me from all across the world. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, Julie just said Ronnie's stuff is great, and he gets better and better. And I get older and older. <laughs> I tell Julie, I really appreciate it, Julie. I guess Julie can hear me, can't she? Yeah. 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 I, Julie, I appreciate it very much, and Julie knows I love her. And so every once in a while, I'll get an email from Julie and she'll say, hey, Ronnie, we need to Zoom. Or I'll send her, Julie, we need to Zoom and we'll come on and she sits there and we'll talk for half an hour or 45, ever how long about everything. Mm-hmm. So what's going on, how to improve, how to do this and everything. So, yeah, love Julie. Julie's fantastic. Yeah, so, she's a good gal, a good yeah. gal. Absolutely. And I, I guess I watch Julie because of her hair. I love her hair. <laughs> oh. Julie. <laughs> Do you like her new haircut? Oh, yeah, I like her hair. Yeah, yeah. When she does this to it, Nick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Julie, we she have to say, talk about you. Say something. Julie did say something a couple weeks ago that uh, that I laughed at. She said, oh, I've got to go back to work. And I, I went, I thought, I told her, I said, God, I hope I never have to say those words again. <laughs> here, here, you and here. me both. Here, here, <laughs> Absolutely. I've been retired for 12 years and I don't plan on working again. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way. I even gave up my RN license. Oh my gracious! Yep, mm. I, I put on it retired. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie, talk about the new Williamsburg store. The new Williamsburg store is—it's actually not in Williamsburg. It's in Lightfoot, Virginia, which is um, right next door, really, to Colonial Williamsburg. And um, the name of the shop is, you can still see me, can't you? Yep. I got to figure out, uh, God, why can't I remember the name of the shop? Well, I'll figure it out in a minute. But anyway, um, you know, that's, that's something that happens to you when you get old. <laughs> you know that, don't you? Um, yeah, because I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm looking right now, and uh, Liberty Hill Needleworks. That's it. Liberty Hill Needleworks is in Colonial in Williamsburg. It's at, at, like I say, it's in Lightfoot, Virginia. Beautiful yeah. shop, and, and, and they carry everything. It's really nice, 
And um, they're very helpful in there. They do a lot of classes. They have a lot of group sewings in the area in there. And so, um, yeah, if anybody's in the area, uh, in Williamsburg area, make sure you look up uh, Liberty Hill and uh, they, they'll take care of you. Really nice people. So, and I was glad to see, because we had shops in the Williamsburg area that went out of business. We had one, Haas Troll, the stitching well that Lydia ran for yeah. a long time. And they uh, they went out of business and uh, had a shop downtown and on Duke of Gloucester Street downtown in the historic area went out of business some years ago. So this is the only one in the area right now. So, shops are getting few and or have gotten few and far between. Well, <clears throat> they're getting far and few, and you know they're they're really they're the ones that are really under the pressure to sell. They really are because they're the yeah. ones the brick and mortars. They're the ones that have the electrical bill, the water, you know, the rent and everything else. And mm -hmm. and Ronnie, he just and, and I know Julie the same way. As designers, we don't we don't really have any overhead. No. I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I've got stacks of stuff around here, but it's it's not overhead. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, the shops really, the shops really need our support. I think. Yeah. Stay in business yeah. because there are a lot of a lot of people still go to shops, and a lot of shops have gone into framing. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Karen up in Alexander, she does all that now. So it's a it's it's a I really, I really want to support the shops, try to sell stuff to shops. Well, it's a big difference between looking at a color of fabric online and being able to go into a shop and actually see that exactly color right. and exactly feel right. and actually feel that fabric because maybe That's it's right. one that you don't like. <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly right. I mean, there Wait, are linens that I don't care for because they're too stiff. Yeah. Yeah. I get all of my stuff from Witchell. Um, and Amy, she sends me, I'm, I'm on a designer program. So when I, I'm stitching a piece and everything, anything I want, I just call them up and tell them to <coughs> send it to me as a designer. So, I mean, mm -hmm. so that's, that's good. But I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't request it often because I don't do that many designs a year. Right. So anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Takes you a I while. <laughs> it takes me a while. Julie, Julie was laugh. Julie laughs at me all the time and everything because I've got I don't know, I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna move this thing here. You see in the corner over there? I used to buy these oh, over there. Those are bolts of material, cross stitch, <laughs> blue, navy blue, and off color cross stitch. And we at sixty, I guess sixty inches wide. Oh, wow. Inches, and we were buying 50 yards, 50, 75 yards of this stuff on big rolls. And and at the time, what we were doing is my wife was going nuts. We're sitting in there making miniature kits of my Williamsburg stuff, cutting the fabric, putting it in it, putting the floss in it. I was ordering the floss and putting the instructions in it, stapling labels to this stuff and sending them out. And... Uh, God, I, I, I hated that. I hated that. Yeah. <laughs> Come home to work and sit down there and have to stuff bags and put labels on it. That ain't what I want to do. No. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, we did it, but but that's when Williamsburg was hot. They had pottery factories. So. Yeah. Anyway, I've still got a lot of that stuff left over. Now you got to stitch on blue. No, I don't stitch on blue. The only blue one I ever had, I had a, a design I put out years. Uh, I got a box here or something. I put out years ago was uh, uh, the Palace Illumination. And why I bought all that material, there was a Palace Illumination. It was on Ooh. blue thread, blue fabric. That blue fabric, that, the bolt, the one in the corner, the blue fabric. And so what we were doing is making kits. We were putting a book in it and everything. And we were cutting that and putting it all together. Figuring, you know, that's, people want it. Uh -huh. So, And every year, Colonial Winsburg has this big illumination thing. And so, so I'd do that, man. Try to capitalize on that. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you have to admit, you've done a lot of things that are fun. I've, <laughs> I've done I've done a lot of things. I've done a lot of things wrong, I can tell you, in this stuff. I and a lot of stuff right. I you know, it's it's been fun. It's been yeah. fun. I made it I have made too many people mad. I'm sure they're mad when they sit down there and start stitching one of these things and it takes a while. I, I every time I tell people all the time they'll buy a pattern for me, one of these patterns. I and I'll 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 put on that don't stitch it in one night. <laughs> you know. This is not a one night project. No. So. No. No. It might what? be a six month project, but Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't stitch anything as large as what you do. And I, I know Julie is stitching this thing a world map. She's yes, doing she the world map. And I said on her broadcast, I told her one time on that. I bet she know. I don't want to mind. I was talking about her. I said, she won't finish it. She'll never finish that. <laughs> she might, though. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. She <laughs> I, might. I, I, I'm playing with her. I kid with her. You got to. Double dog dare her. <laughs> <laughs> she has given it her best shot here late, though. Oh, I know she has. Yeah. I know she has. <laughs> well, oh, I have one more question for you, but I All already right. know the answer, but we'll I'll ask you anyway. Have you ever used model stitchers? Model stitches? Uh -huh. Oh, you mean getting somebody stitch for me? Uh -huh. Never, ever, never, ever, ever. I've never had a person stitch anything. No, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. How I, dare you? <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I swear I did. I did the original stitch, but my mother back in the 80s before my mother was older, obviously older, and she passed away. I, but anyway, my mother would stitch a model for Colonial Williamsburg. That was oh. after I had the book out. I'd already done one stitching of it, but she would take and stitch a model to hang up in one of the shops. Uh -huh. Yep, that's the only time. But but a uh, new design, a design? No, I've never I've never done a design, farmed it out for somebody else to say. I just don't. I mean, yeah. I, so. Well, that's all part of your process, though. I, you know, it, that's my price. It's a process, but also, who, I don't know anybody that I could even ask to stitch one of mine. Uh -huh. I mean, they're going to do it. I mean, if you came to me and said, hey, Ronnie, I've got this pattern. I want you to stitch it for me that I'm going to make patterns of and go and sell the patterns and everything. <laughs> Fat chance of me doing that. I can do <laughs> With that. No. Stitch it yourself. If I stitch it, I'm keeping it. It's mine. <laughs> That's the way. Hey, hey. Is that self? I don't know. Uh-uh. As no. a lot of people out there stitching wouldn't do that. Now they might stitch something little, but they're not gonna stitch not they ain't gonna stitch one of these big ones for somebody. Yeah. They might. They might, but I don't. No, I never. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, let's see. That's just, that's nothing. Missy, who is, says that she has to go now. Time well, for Missy, bed. It's after midnight where she lives. <laughs> okay, Missy. I'm glad, I'm glad you watched and looked in, Missy. And uh, good luck to you on all your stitching. <laughs> She'll catch it later. But does anyone else have any questions to ask Ronnie while we're here? <clears throat> put all put up with all my sneezing and coughing and whatever. <laughs> I woke up with a terrible cold mm. yesterday. But it'll go away. <laughs> Five days. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Doesn't look like we have anything else, Ronnie. So okay, well, I think we'll end the stream here. All right, and uh, again, I like to thank everyone who's who's watched or look, joined in tonight, uh, this evening, and uh, good luck to you. And if uh, you got any questions, you can either send them to Karen or, or get in touch with me. I'm easy to get in mm -hmm. touch with. Just uh, give me a call, give me an email. It's uh it's R R 
O W E one two five at Verizon.net. And so um just give me a holler, give me a call if you uh, patterns, all my stuff, everything I, I guess everything I've ever done is on SD Ronnie Rowe Designs. Uh-huh. I do yeah, have it is. Um, and um uh, Karen was nice enough to reach out to me. I've been doing this for 40, like I said, 43 years, and I, I'm really kind of new um, to the video. I started doing them after, uh, really after talking to Julie, Fixing with Jewels and everything. I decided to do one, try it, and figure out how to do it. And um, Karen was nice enough to reach out to me, and I said she was surprised I didn't have as many subscribers. And um, I don't know how to get them. I, mean, I, don't know. I tell everybody to hit the little subscribe button. The last video I did, I tried to do a little funny thing in front with a, you know, hey, go out and buy right, you know, and hit the subscribe <laughs> button. And um, but anyway, if you if you if you do tune in, take a look and everything, do hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it very very much. Yeah. And uh, uh, my my videos, I try to make them entertaining. I try to uh, talk about something that's fairly widespread to everyone, whether it be sizes of something, color, or how you pick this and everything, or what I do. So, and it, they're normally, they're normally no more than 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but anyway, anybody who does uh, take a look at them, hit the subscribe button and I appreciate it very much. Yes. And those of you who haven't seen his channel, go check it out. Check it out. It was, <laughs> hey, yeah. and, and, it, and guess what? It's free. That's right. Yeah, and it costs right. nothing to hit the subscribe button. That's right. I'm hit you up. Now, I don't know what it gets you. When you hit a, you hit a subscribe button, I guess you get a notification. And when I put another one out? If they hit the bell. <clears throat> oh, okay. There's a little, there's the subscribe button. And then there's a little bell that they can tick that will get, that will tell them when you put a video up. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, no. Anyway, if I if I get one person watching, it's okay because I have a good time doing it anyway. Good, I'm <laughs> glad it was a pleasure. Pardon me. An absolute pleasure to have you here this evening. Well, thank you. It's nice being here. I appreciate you. I appreciate you having me. I really mean that. I really, yeah. I really do. Well, and I hope this gets you a few more subscribers. Maybe so. We will see in we the days, see. In the weeks, and the months, and the. I'm not going to say years, <laughs> <laughs> days, weeks, and months ahead. So, yep, yep. Anyway. Okay, so okay. looks like there's no more questions. So, I think we will end it here. And, like I said, I want to thank Ronnie for being my very first designer guest. <laughs> well, thank you, Karen. And I appreciate you having me. I really do. Thank you. Not a problem. You. Not a problem. So I'm available anytime. <laughs> we'll do this again. <laughs> okay. Hope so. Okay. Okay. I'm going to switch.